Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of my Volkswagen build. Uh, I'm going to start this episode with showing you guys how I did some of the chrome work on the Beetle. I used bare metal foil on the body itself. Uh, for all the rest of the chrome, I actually wound up using a Molotow chrome pen, which I will show you in a later video. So to use bare metal foil, it's real simple. You just cut out the size of piece you need. Just try to cut it a little bit bigger than you would like. I would recommend using a fresh new blade. In this case, I'm using the Tamiya Hobby Knife that I recently purchased. It's basically just chrome foil with a sticky back, so you're just going to go ahead and peel it off the backing. Uh, in my case, I had to use my knife again to get it off of there. It sticks on pretty well. And then just go ahead and stick it on what you want to make chrome. Once you get it stuck on, you just want to make sure you get the edges marked out really well, uh, burnish it down with a Q-tip, and then cut it down to the appropriate size. Here I'm using a toothpick to make sure I get the edges nice and sharp. Once you're all marked, again, use that nice new sharp knife and cut it down to size. story never looked the same and you're still just lost that I made it here some way tonight tonight and then once you get it cut down you just peel off what you don't need and the rest of it should stay behind As I said, it's been a really long time since I've used bare metal foil. I honestly remember it sticking better than it currently does. I don't know if that's something they changed or something with the new formulation. I'm not entirely sure, uh, which is why I only used it for the body. Uh, I find the Molotow Chrome doesn't really stick to clear coat that well. For the rest of the parts, I go ahead and I prime everything up with the uh, Tamiya Surface Primer. I like to use the fine because it goes on less thick and it doesn't fade out any of those fine details that I like to keep. Just spray everything down, make sure you get all the angles, all the sides, and get everything primed up and ready for paint. Now obviously you could use an airbrush primer if you'd like. I honestly just find that takes way too much time and this is far quicker.
Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out the various pieces. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm starting by cutting out anything that needed to be painted in a semi-gloss black. So I can go ahead and get those all painted in one group. Now here obviously you have some options on whatever your preference is. I know some people paint them right on the sprues. I feel that when you cut them off it leaves empty spaces where the paint doesn't cover. Obviously it has to connect somewhere. So I typically cut everything off the sprue first and then paint everything before I do any assembly. Now the sprue cutters I'm using here are the Tamiya fine tip sprue cutters. Uh, again, you can use whatever you prefer. I like the fine tip ones because you can get as close as possible and leave as little bit behind as possible so it's less for you to have to cut off later. Once everything's cut off, you want to go ahead and take off any mold lines that you see, as well as where the sprues joined up with the parts. Now I'm using the side of my knife here. Uh, again, this is not necessarily the safest way to do it. You can end up taking too much off and get into a bad situation. Uh, you can also use a file, a piece of sandpaper, whatever your preference is. Since the seats are all going to be painted the same color, I'm going to go ahead and glue them together before painting them, uh, since, again, it's all getting painted the same. Using my Tamiya Extra Thin to get the seat back glued onto the seat itself. The great thing about the Tamiya Extra Thin is you can apply it to a crack like this, and the capillary action will go ahead and pull that glue in there and make sure everything gets glued down thoroughly instead of having to put it on the inside. and got a clamp, clamped it together and let it sit for a while. The rest of this I'm going to show you sped up. Uh, it's all the same, again, just getting rid of any mold lines, cutting off the parts where the sprues meet, and getting rid of any injector pin marks that there might be.
let's make this world better. You and I, we just stick around, stick around. I don't care how many times it takes, just prove me wrong, prove me wrong. Let's fly. Let's look at stars as we pass and say we'll never look back. This particular part had something like eight injector pin marks. I went ahead and scraped all those off before painting the part.
It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. So yeah, like I said, I'm not going to try to hide any of my mistakes. As you can see here, I broke the shifter. So I try to glue it back together with some Tamiya Extra Thin. Unfortunately, there's just not enough area for it to stick together. So I'll show you guys how I wound up actually fixing this in a later video. So now the seats, as they're glued together, you can see there's a pretty serious gap in there. Uh, typically, you can fill this in with some to me Extra Thin, get it to liquefy the plastic, and then sand it out. In this case, that just wasn't enough. So I used my plastic filler putty to go ahead and fill that gap. And then proceeded to take the mold lines off the rest of the parts. And then once the putty dried, went ahead and sanded it down flesh. So thanks again for joining me. The next video will be coming up next week. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you again. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.